47. So how does one solve a murder mystery, 47? Motive means an opportunity, I believe. May I suggest you ask the suspects for alibis? Or perhaps you prefer searching the manor for clues first? Patrick Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, shit, it's that sneaky butler, isn't it? He ratted me out. Elaine, give us some privacy, would you? Don't tell mother, okay? She's really tense these days, and the last thing I need is more hassle. I took that pretty blonde, um, Rosie, uh, for an evening stroll. I, I mean... How the fuck am I expected to cope for an entire weekend in this shithole? I'm bored out of my mind. If that's all, I think I'll get back to my slow death by boredom. What did you think of Zachary? Oh, creepy as hell. No ambition. Imagine deciding to live in a museum. You know, father says Zachary and Alexei used to be two of a kind. He had a great future ahead of him. Then suddenly, he just gave up everything. What an idiot. Thank God daddy chose looks and brains over pedigree when he married mummy. I don't have to worry about the inbreeding so customary in these circles. So, is that it? Did you see anything suspicious last night? No. I reckon Zachary topped himself. I know I would have. Or perhaps Mr. Fernsby. I don't like him. He could have done it. Oh, uh, just remembered, I went for a stroll behind the greenhouse last night. Maybe that's where it is. What is? My lost button. The one you couldn't find at the graveyard. Wouldn't it be a good idea for you to go and look for it? Now? A good idea. Yes. Rosie, you need to forget about Patrick. No good's gonna come of it. Stick to your own kind. You mean like Chris? He treated me like shit. All he wanted to do... Uh, excuse me, but it really freaks me out when people stand too close to me. Did all the groceries arrive? I heard some of the delivery people were unhappy with the security at the gate. But why is... Rosie, tell me what you did last night. I'm in trouble, aren't I? I... I spent the evening with Patrick. We met after dinner and I went home at one in the morning. He said he needed someone real to talk to. When he looks at you, it makes you feel like the center of the universe, like a real princess. But now he just ignores her. Well, he's under a lot of pressure. He's an idiot, that's what he is. You mean like Chris? He treated me like shit. All he wanted to do was play his stupid video games, never. any romance. I deserve romance. Hello there. Did you notice anything out of the ordinary? Any strangers outside the house? No, no, we saw no one outside, I except Patrick's mother, Emma. We were sitting on the bench behind the greenhouse talking when she came out and um, we had to hide. You won't tell her about me and Patrick, will you? She'd insist Madame Carlyle fire me. I'm sure of it. Do right, she will. She's always going on about how things will change once she's in charge of Thornbridge Manor. So 41 guests will attend the funeral tomorrow. There's still a lot to see to, but we're in good time, I think. OK, 
fucking headache from all the decisions. I mean, pram or stroller. That is the door to Mr. Fernsby's office. was with the first one. The ones that come after certainly are a lot less of a worry. Did Alice tell you what Emma did when she arrived? Tell me. A little bit of constructive criticism. You could use a mint. What is it? Rebecca Carla, can you tell me about yesterday evening? We don't really see much of each other, my brothers and I. I suppose it takes our mother's funeral to bring us together, and even then, it's not like we sit on each other's laps. Now, let's see. Patrick, Gregory's son, disappeared straight after dinner. You know, I think he might be in some sort of trouble. Edward wanted to go as well, but Gregory convinced him to stay for a few drinks before they went off for a pint at the local at a quarter to nine. I swear Gregory enjoys Edward's discomfort over staying here. I had a conference call with my New York office at nine, so I spent three hours on my laptop in my room and went straight to bed afterwards. I don't know about Emma. She did act a bit strange. You know, I bet she was making lists for changes needing to be done once she gets her hands on Thornbridge Manor. Quite the shock she had when Mother arrived during breakfast. Is that everything, Mr. Whitmer? I do have a lot to see to. Tell me about Zachary. Did he act strange last night? You know, now you mention it, he was a lot more chatty than usual. He wanted to know about my connections in the publishing business. Apparently, a friend of his is writing a book, which strikes me as very peculiar. I didn't think he had any friends. Is there anything else you want to ask me? Anything else you feel like mentioning? I may be wrong, but I saw Mr. Fernsby, the butler, leave Zachary's room early this afternoon. And he seemed a bit startled when he saw me in the hallway. It's probably nothing. Oh, and one more thing. Please be kind to Edward. He can only take so much. You look tanned. I bet Mother spent the last week at her Cypress estate. Am I right? I'm not at liberty to say, ma'am. Oh, come on. I need to know what's going on. This affects me too, you know.
This all confirms that Arthur Edwards stole everything from Madame Carlyle. Perhaps you should let her know how bad it is, 47. I can see from the log that Rebecca was in a conference call from 9 p.m. to midnight last night. Sir. This all confirms that Arthur Edwards stole everything from Madame Carlyle. Perhaps you should let her know how bad it is, 47.
I can see from the log that Rebecca was in a conference call from 9 p.m. to midnight last night. That's a little too close. Professor Edward Carlyle, can you tell me your whereabouts for land? Last night. Oh, yes, this dreadful business with Zachary. I stay at the local inn. You see, I prefer not to spend the night here at Thornbridge Manor. My brother Gregory came along for a nightcap. He'll never admit it, but I think he understands that I find this whole thing upsetting and wanted to provide some comfort. I believe we went to the stag's head around half past eight. Anything else I can do to help? Can you tell me about Zachary's behavior last night? I certainly didn't expect him to commit suicide. Sure, he was upset by a mother's supposed death. We were. But he seemed more engaged than usual. You should ask Rebecca. They had a long talk. Did you know that he hadn't left Thornbridge Manor in nearly 50 years? His plants, mother, and the staff were all the company he had. If that's all, I have a speech to write. Did you notice anything else out of the ordinary? You mean, apart from the fact that we came here to bury our mother and she shows up alive and kicking? Zachary found dead in his bed this morning? Or perhaps that the planned funeral is still taking place and I have to do the eulogy? Mother will surely have strong opinion on it afterwards. I, I can't breathe. Excuse me. Yes, hi, Cassie. It's me again, Edward. I, I know I'm not supposed to leave you messages, and this is the last time, I promise. It's just, uh, I don't know how to handle this whole situation. I, I don't think I can, really. I, I, I can't feel my legs, and my eyes are not working properly. This flicker thing again. Y you can't tell anyone. But well, the thing is, I've been asked to perform the eulogy at the funeral event tomorrow. It all sounds so unbelievable. But even though Mother is still alive, we still have to go through with the funeral. I have to write the eulogy. I don't think I can. She would definitely want to read it, and no matter what... I, I just know she'll be disappointed in me. Again. My legs are really weird. I, I need you, Cassie. I'm sorry, I, I know. I I'll hang up. Not supposed to do this. Christ, sorry. Bye. Gregory Carlyle. Can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, you're wondering about my alibi, Mr. Detective. Well, um, I left Thornbridge around half eight for a pint with Edward. I wish I hadn't. <laughs> Quiz night at the inn. On the other hand, staying here with Zachary, my obnoxious sister, and the wife sporting another one of her headaches would have been a fate worse than death. <laughs> the, the, the short of it, Zachary was very much alive when we left. 
I stayed for the last shout, and I was back here just before midnight. Is that all? Not very thorough, are you? Madame Carlyle is still going ahead with her staged funeral tomorrow, and she wants to inspect the arrangements. How about it, 47? You feel up to giving her the grand tour? Hello, sir. Zachary's diary. This is big. He was about to confess to the world that he and Alexa murdered their older brother Montgomery 46 years ago. And apparently, Mr. Fernsby helped make the murder look like an accident. And 47, the handwriting doesn't match the suicide letter in his room, proving he didn't write it himself. Painkiller. Lethal use enough of them. But not the poison used to kill Zachary. Of course, Madame Carlyle doesn't know that. Are you considering to frame the butler, 47? Mr. Fernsby clearly didn't commit the murder, but I think you have enough evidence to convince Madame Carlyle he did. Maybe you should tell him you are ready to present your findings. Unless, of course, you want to do some more detecting, 47? Emmer Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Surely I'm not a suspect. I need to account for everyone. 
Well, I spent the evening with my family, but I got an awful migraine and had to take to bed. Everyone can attest to that. I believe I went up when the boys sat down for a drink around eight o'clock. Anything else you want to know? How did you feel about Zachary? I might as well be honest. His presence was always awkward. But how do you have a meaningful conversation with a man who only cares about plants? In my opinion, Alexa bears some responsibility for how this ended. She supported his self-limiting behavior by letting him live here. Is that all? Have you noticed anything else out of the ordinary? Nothing special comes to mind. Except, perhaps, I did get a feeling that Zachary was depressed, not just sad. I suppose he realized that he had no one with Alexa gone. Even Alexa must feel the pangs of guilt over that one, letting him believe she was dead. Then again, guilt isn't her strong suit. Tell me about Zachary. Zach? Huh. Such a sad old sod. A bit heavy on the bottle. But who could blame him? The only company he had was his rare plants and mother, who travels more than she stays here. Honestly, I can't say which is the bigger ball. He's better off dead. Anything else you want to pry from my intricate intellect? Anything else you'd like to tell me? Nothing, really. I'm just enjoying the show. Our perfect mother obviously fucked up, didn't she? Faking her own death. You know, she's explained nothing to us. I think she's scared to own up to her own mistake. That door leads to Emma and Gregory's room. Now this is interesting, 47. A letter from Emma's mother stating that Emma is the illegitimate child of Alexa's late older brother, Montgomery. And listen to this. She claims to have witnessed Alexa and Zachary murder him. The plot thickens. A keychain pendant for the greenhouse What's that doing in Emma and Gregory's room, I wonder? And why is the key missing?
An old letter, 47. Never opened. Must have slid under the secret door nearly 46 years ago. It states that Alexa Carlyle's older brother, Montgomery, wanted Alexa to become the heir to the Carlyle Empire instead of himself. Hmm. Interesting. You're an excellent detective, 47. Uncovering truths half a century old. If you frame it correctly, I believe you could use the information to convince Madame Carlyle that Zachary committed suicide. Maybe you should ask Mr. Fernsby to see her. Or perhaps you feel like digging a bit more. This is a table showing lethal dosages for the poison used to kill Zachary. Something is circled, 47. Female, age 65 to 79, 60 to 64 kilograms. I'd say Madame Carlyle is next in line for a poisoning. Broken lab equipment. It looks like it was recently used, though. You have uncovered enough evidence to tell Madame Carlyle that Emma is the murderer. Quite the detective, 47. I'm impressed. I suggest you go tell Mr. Fernsby. Unless you think there are more secrets to uncover. Please stay back. What is it, Burnsby? Mr. Edward is not coping too well with the situation, I'm afraid. I am ready to present my conclusion to Madame Carlyle. Very well. If you'll follow me, sir. Step inside. Your detective skills have gained you access to the lion's den, 47. Now, go claim your reward. Who's been at the safe?
So, Mr. Whitmer, you've reached a conclusion. Take a seat. Please, go ahead. Your niece, Emma Carlyle, murdered your brother, Zachary. My niece? Emma is not my niece. She's my daughter-in-law. And your niece. Emma is the illegitimate child of your late older brother, Montgomery, who you and Zachary killed 46 years ago. That's preposterous. You asked me to find out what happened to Zachary. Would you rather not know? No. No, go on. I found a letter from Emmer's mother, Jane, who was the fiance of your older brother at the time of his death. She witnessed how you and Zachary pushed him off the balcony. She believed you did it to steal the Carlisle Empire from her and her unborn child. And she raised Emmer to reclaim what she lost, marry your heir, Gregory, get revenge, and secure the Carlisle Empire for her bloodline generations to come. Emma is the daughter of Montgomery and that local girl, Jane. She is. Well, the girl got it wrong. I didn't steal anything. I did what was necessary to protect the future of the Carlisles. Montgomery wasn't cut out to take over from father. All heart and no balls. Emma used the funeral gathering to speed up her installment as the lady of the house, seizing the opportunity to stage Zachary's suicide. She did her homework, used a poison made from one of Zachary's rare plants, found old floor plans from Thornbridge Manor to gain access to his room through a secret passage. That scheming bitch. More than you think. I found proof that she will try to poison you next. Well, I'll have to take care of that. Thank you, Mr. Whitmer. You have not disappointed. I promised you I would reward you generously if you solved the case. So, what do you suggest? I want the file you have on Arthur Edwards. Edwards, the constant. But how do you... Oh, I see. I expected you might show up. But to kill me, not help me. But I've been wrong on so many things lately, so why not this one? I will give you the file on Edwards. You've earned it. Where are you going? Please, sit down. Thank you. Now, where were we? I will give you the file on Edwards. You've earned it. I don't suppose I could convince you to deal with my daughter-in-law now you're here. I would like to see her dead. No? What a shame. I'll have to see to it some other way, then. The file you want is in the safe. God, I hope. Thank you. Good work, 47. That's the file on Arthur Edwards secured. Time to take care of Madame Carlyle. <laughs> Mission complete. Well done, 47. Just keep calm.
47. They're everywhere. Go, get out! It's the Constantine. Shit!